What's up everyone? Welcome back to Tasker's Barbecue Supply. Today, we're gonna to be making some buffalo burgers for you all. Hey everyone, before we get started, if you like what we're doing here at Tasker's Barbecue Supply, make sure you hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner so that you can help us continue growing. Now let's get rolling into the video. What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna be reviewing some of the ground buffalo meat we got from our last crowd cow order. Now like always with any of our crowd cow videos, I will be putting the link in the description below that will give you $25 off your first order with crowd cow. You'll also help us get credits on crowd cow to continue buying more meat to review for you guys. But they had a deal when we did our last order that they had some new meat in and it was ground buffalo. Now, if you didn't watch our unboxing video, uh, I did say that this is the first time I've ever received any meat from Crowd Cow that seemed like it was packaged for commercial sale. Um, and as you can see, it is uh, kind of pre-packed for commercial sale. Um, it comes from Black Wing Meats. Uh, it's a gourmet meat company, no artificial ingredients and minimal processing. Now, with that being said, is that a bad thing that it comes from Crowd Cow like this? No, I'm sure that you know, it's probably something that they outsourced from Blackwing or from somebody that they work with um, to get them some ground buffalo in. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the first time I've ever gotten anything from them that actually had like commercial packaging on it. But anything that I've ever gotten from Crowd Cow has been fantastic and very high quality. So I have very high hopes for this meat. It is our first time ever doing uh, any type of buffalo meat. So we just started with the ground so we can make a couple buffalo burgers and see what we think of it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this unpackaged and get it into a bowl so we can season it and make some patties out of it. All right, we're back. We put our ground buffalo, uh, one pound of it in the bottom of our bowl here. And I will tell you, it's got a fairly uh, light color to it. And it's got a different smell to it. Now it's not bad in any you know in any way. It's not pungent. It's just different than like beef normally is. Um, it almost kind of reminds me of like some deer or some some type of wild game. So that kind of uh, that's kind of good for me because I like wild game meats. Um, but it smells good. It's just different than normal beef is. So we're gonna go some simple flavors with some seasoning on this. I'm not gonna go anything extravagant because I wanna get a lot of the natural flavor from this buffalo so that we can really taste what it's all about. With that being said, I am gonna put um, a little bit of the AP rub in there, which is just gonna give us our simple salt, uh, garlic, pepper, uh, just some base seasonings. And I'm gonna come behind that with just a little bit of barbecue, uh, the barbecue rub just for a little bit of added flavor, but I don't want to overpower the flavor of this meat. So we'll just put a little bit of this in. And then we'll mix it in. And you want to make sure you mix it real thoroughly. You don't want to take a bite of a whole bunch of big pockets of seasoning and then have no seasoning on other parts of the meat. So now that we have our seasonings mixed into our buffalo, we're going to go ahead and get this pressed into patties. We're going to be using our patty maker from Snap-On that actually came from our local Snap-On rep, Scott McHugh. He got us set up with this. And this has been our favorite burger press so far. Uh, it works very well. Um, this buffalo meat seems to have a pretty decent fat content to it. 
That's one thing I was worried about because, as some of you know, a lot of wild game meats are very lean. And not that that's a bad thing, it's, it's healthier, but what you find is the patties have a tendency to crumble a little bit and start to dry out and have a, have a hard time staying together perfectly on the grill, especially if you're using like a gas grill or something with a higher heat. Um, they tend to dry out a little bit because the fat content's very low. It's the same way as using super lean uh, beef trying to make patties. You want a little bit of fat in there that kind of holds the patty together uh, and gives it moisture while it's cooking. This seems to be pretty well, so I have some pretty high hopes that this is going to form patties very well and make some really delicious burgers. So let's get some patties formed up now. We're just going to take our burger press, put a decent sized chunk in there. We don't want anything too big. Let's try to press that out, see what that looks like. Right. Might be able to add just a little bit to that. There we go. Now this is always the hardest part is trying to get the patty out of the press. That didn't come out too bad. Now we're just gonna make another patty. All right, now that we have all three patties formed up, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our Rectech Bull fired up here, uh, running a, probably somewhere in the ballpark of 275, uh, maybe 300 in that area with uh, some cooking pellets perfect mix. I don't wanna do these too fast. I mean, they are burgers, so I don't need to do them low and slow, but I don't wanna do them too fast. I wanna let them kinda of slow cook, but we're also gonna be throwing some other stuff on with them. Um, but like I said, we're gonna get the Rectech fired up and we'll be out there to meet you soon. What's up, everyone? We're out at our Rectech Bull 700. We have it running at 290 degrees using our cooking pellets perfect mix. Now, as you can see, we have our buffalo burgers out here. We also have some fresh sausage uh, we made into some patties, and we're going to put that on here. It is a pre-seasoned sausage, so I didn't put anything in with it. It's just pre-seasoned like that from the butcher. So I made some of those into some uh, just some hand-formed patties because I like them a little bit smaller. Um, we're going to throw those on a grill, and then we have one other secret meat that we're going to show you in just a second after we get these thrown on. So our grill's nice and warmed up. Let's go ahead and open it up and get our burgers on. Now I'm just gonna be laying these buffalo burgers toward the back of the grill because they're a little bit larger and that's the hotter portion of my grill. I'm gonna lay them toward the back. And I'm gonna set our fresh sausage burgers out here on the front. like that. Now we have one other secret meat that we're going to bring out for you guys and that is going to be fresh pork side and when I mean fresh I mean fresh. This pork side and we're just going to set it right here on the grill on the opposite side there so it can start to cook up and we're going to go ahead and shut this grill in. This fresh side is absolutely fresh. It just came from the butcher the other night and it was still in a slab and we sliced it fresh just a couple minutes ago. You can't get much better than that. I love fresh side and if you've never tried it, it's similar to bacon, uh, but it does have a little bit different texture to it because the meat is a little bit um, almost more rich, but it has a lot of fat content like bacon and it's generally sliced very, very thick. So about two slices of thick cut bacon is generally what this is sliced at. And that's pretty well what I sliced mine at but I'm gonna kinda use that as almost a uh, bacon topper for our buffalo burgers, I think. And I think it'll turn out really well that way. Generally what I do with my fresh side is I just stick it on a pan, season both sides, and stick it on the grill. We're gonna be doing a video here very soon with doing fresh side. Um, that will be its own separate video. 
I'm also going to be doing a separate video of taking some real pork bellies that are fresh cut. Uh, they have not been cured, smoked, or frozen. They are very fresh. And we're going to be curing those and then low smoking them and making some cured and smoked bacon here at home. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to be doing that too. Now, some of you guys may notice we have a newcomer to the channel back here. And I really shouldn't call it a newcomer. Uh, this grill has been here. Uh, we just haven't featured it much because we've generally been about mostly smoking. But as some of you know, and most of you may not, we actually started becoming a Napoleon Grill dealer uh, on top of our Green Mountain Grills. What's nice about that is Napoleon is a gas grill and some of you may hate us for that, that's okay. Um, we want to give you guys some products for people who don't necessarily want a pellet grill or want something different and they like propane. Uh, we wanted to give those people some options too and we want to offer the top of the line product. Napoleon offers that. And the reason I'm telling you this is that grill you see right there that still is in perfect working condition is fully stainless on the outside, is 27 years old, and still works perfectly fine. The only thing that has ever been replaced is one set of two burners for its entire life. That's fantastic. You're not gonna get that out of anything else. We sell those products in our store now. We're gonna start featuring uh, some cooks on some gas grills. And not only just cooking on a gas grill, which is pretty you know, self-explanatory, we're gonna be stepping our motto up. That baby's 27 years old, uh, it still works perfectly. We're gonna keep it around. It's not going to the trash or anything like that. But we're gonna be stepping a new model up in here, uh, a Prestige Pro. And we're gonna be showing you how you can smoke on a gas grill and do rotisserie cooks on a gas grill. So we're gonna be bringing you some more options for those of you that have a gas grill and wanna see what is uh, available to you and, and the wild possibilities you have to make on a gas grill. So those videos will be coming soon too. Now, we're just gonna let these take on some smoke and heat, and we'll be back here in a little bit and we flip them over and we'll check on them. All right, everyone, we're back. It's been about 35 minutes since we put all this stuff on the grill. Now, I haven't flipped anything yet, and a lot of times I won't even flip my burgers and stuff because these pellet grills work so well with convection heat and, and cooking all the way around. But I do generally like to flip a winner on the thicker side, which these are. So they're pretty well three quarters of the way done now. I'm just gonna flip them just to get some even cooking on the other side of them. Um, and I am gonna go ahead and flip that fresh side as well while we're in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Now, one thing I did notice about these burgers is they have seemed to shrink up a good bit which I'm not overly surprised about, being that they are kind of on the fattier side, um, like our elk burgers. Our elk burgers were very, very lean, um, which you get with pretty much all venison. They don't shrink up much because the, there's not much fat in there, so you're just retaining the uh, muscle fibers in your, your meat, where this buffalo seems to have a decent amount of fat in it, so your fat's rendering out, and that's why uh, you have shrinkage. So you'll notice a lot of times um, when you do burgers, the more fat content, the more they're gonna shrink up. Um, these sausages have shrunk up a little bit, but like I said, I don't like to do the sausages full size. I like small little patties like that on the sausage. Um, so they're coming along very well too. Like I said, these are about three quarters of the way done. So we're just gonna let them cook a little bit on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my fresh side while, uh, in just a second. And then we're gonna let them take a little bit more smoke, a little bit more heat, uh, probably another 10, 15 minutes and they'll be done. Uh, so once they're done, we'll be back out here and uh, we'll pull them off the grill and we'll take them inside and try them out. All right, everyone, we're back inside. We let those burgers go for about another uh, 10 minutes after we flipped them and they're perfectly done. Uh, we have a nice smoke ring on them. And I know I said I'd mixed in just very little seasoning so it could get a uh, natural taste of the buffalo meat, but I could not help making a big, thick burger out of this. And what I did with this burger you see here is I put my buffalo burger down, I put some cheese on top of it, melted that, I laid some of that fresh side that we just smoked over top of it and dumped the barbecue sauce to it. And there's nothing better in my opinion than a big, thick burger like that with some fresh bacon or fresh side and barbecue sauce on it. But I did keep one that has no cheese on it, no extra seasonings other than the ones we put in at the beginning. 
um, and no other sauces or anything on it, so we can try it just plain too. So let's take a, a little bite out of this. So definitely different than beef, not bad in any way. I think it's actually really good. Um, it's hard to explain. It's It's got a pretty close consistency to beef, but the flavor is a little bit more rich than beef, so it's not quite as bland. Um, and I, I would say a lot of that comes from uh, it having a higher fat content. That's probably where a lot of the flavor comes from. But the very little seasoning we put in it, I think was perfect because you can't really hardly taste any of the barbecue. You taste a little bit of salt and pepper, but that's what you want on just about any burger or steak. But I think over seasoning would have been a mistake. The natural flavor of that buffalo comes through really well. And I'm not gonna lie, that's really delicious. Um, it almost makes me wish I could get more of that just to make burgers out of that from now on. It's very, very good that way. Um, and it, it comes through, it's it's still nice and tender. Uh, it's not dried out. We do have a nice smoke ring on it. Like I say, the patty shrunk up a little bit, but that's what you're gonna have with something with a higher fat content. So not a big deal there. Um, they did stay very, very uh, uniform and they did stay together very well, which I like. Uh, sometimes it happens when you try different meats, the meat crumbles and falls apart, the patties crack in half. These ones stayed together very well, which I liked. And like I said, the, the taste is amazing. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting the buffalo from Crowd Cow, I definitely would. Um, but let's give one of these burgers that I made a try here. Man, that is outstanding. That flavor um, between the fresh side, which we did with a pecan rub, over top of that buffalo, a little bit of barbecue sauce, man, that is just delicious. If you're ever thinking about trying a burger even, do that, make some fresh side uh, or some really thick cut bacon, smoke it on there while you're doing the burgers, lay it over top, put some barbecue sauce to it, and it makes a fantastic meal. Um, but I would say that uh, this bur this uh, buffalo from Crowd Cow is just awesome. Like I said, if you ever get a chance to try it, I definitely would. The flavor is really good. The moisture content's really nice in it. And it's something different to try on a, on a weekend. You can throw some buffalo burgers on, try something with the family and friends that you haven't tried before. And uh, we'll better spend a weekend with your family trying some new meat. But we're going to get to eating the rest of this because I can't stop. It's absolutely amazing. We'll see you guys back here next time. Don't forget there's a uh, coupon code below in the description that will give you $25 off your first Crowd Cow purchase. And you'll help us buy more meat to test for you so that you don't have to buy it ahead of time. Until next time, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you soon.